I've been waiting to film this video the whole week and I'm so excited to finally film it. Today I'm gonna list some of the 10 reasons why I absolutely adore Dairy Girls. This list is not in a particular order or anything. I've never been so prepared, I wrote everything down. Intro is done, intro is done, let's go, let's go! Number 10, the music and the environment. Dairy Girls is set in Derry or London Derry in Northern Ireland, right here. It's this very little rural, rural, rural village with a lot of grass and a lot of old buildings, a lot of ancient walls. The environment is just so plain and so simple to be honest, but I find that that adds something to the whole series. Whatever special can happen in these like small little towns, you know. And what I also love is the music. Every time the group is about to fuck shit up, this Irish Scottish bagpipe metal rock music plays. In between shots there's a lot of reggae and pop playing. It's kind of like the music fits and it doesn't at the same time. It just completely matches the whole shtick of the whole series. Number nine, all of the side characters. Every single side character in this show is just amazing. I will keep some of the side characters that are my absolute favorite for further down the list, but some of them that I will mention right now are, of course, the priest. He is a priest, but he is constantly doubting his own beliefs, and it just makes for some great television and some great weird occurrences and weird events and it's just it's cracker. Second of all, all of the parents. The mother of Claire is very much like her daughter. The mother of Michelle is very much like her daughter. Same for Mary, same for Sarah. I just love how you can see the similarities between the mothers and the daughters. I also like Jenny. She kind of reminded me of like Moaning Myrtle from Harry Potter. Number eight, the fact that the show has consistently funny characters. Some of my favorite moments include Eren's walks and faces. There's just something about the faces that she makes that just makes this show so much better. She kind of reminds me of my sister sometimes. We make those weird like little like like those faces. I also adore Claire's craziness. You could kind of see her as the Ross of this show, but only like a hundred times worse, and she cracks under pressure like that. The last one that I want to give some attention, you probably already guessed, is Orla. She's very strange. She has all of these weird moments. You have to like pay attention to her whenever she's on screen, even in the background, because she's doing the most crazy shit. For example, here, where she's lighting her damn hair on fire. I also love it when she takes her own grandfather to the prom, which is just the cutest moment ever. And in that first episode, she constantly reads Erin's diary. Erin is her cousin, by the way. She constantly reads and narrates sections from her diary. Not only that, but she is actually using that diary for her book report. And the moment that made me spit out my food as I was eating was when they were in this like kind of dressing room and they're picking out new dresses for a prom and she comes out in the most hideous thing ever and oh my god i just i i love orla i just i just love her number seven james is a dairy girl there's this one male character in the main cast named james and he is the cousin of michelle he's going to a complete girls school he isn't being bullied for it necessarily except for you know like a few jabs here and there whenever anyone is addressing the group of main characters, they always say girls and he doesn't even protest anymore. The moment I especially love is when they have this cool teacher and she's wearing some cool like eyeliner and they want to be more like her. So you see a little scene of them in the bathroom and when they come out, you see that also James has put on eyeliner. Number six is that you never know what's gonna happen. I want to mention the first episode in this because the first episode is just the best first episode of a show in, that I've seen in a long time. You all know what I'm talking about if you've seen the show. They're all in detention. There's this super old sister looking after them while she's asleep. Michelle is trying to take back her lipstick that the sister stole. Claire is trying to get the sandwich that the sister was eating. Orla is just looking at the old lady while she's sleeping because she's just super interested. Erin is trying to get away from the tension because she promised the boy that she likes that she would be at his concert. And James is pissing in a bucket in the corner because there are no male toilets on the whole campus. This, this moment is just a perfect representation 
of what you're gonna get the whole show. Number five, the language. I really like the Irish language. I haven't seen many Irish shows in my day and I feel like we need more. I'm not even going to try to do some impressions in Irish because I absolutely suck at impressions. Now I'm gonna mention two side characters that I feel really deserve their own grade, their own point. So number four, Colm. He's the brother of the grandfather of Aaron and Orla and he is written like how do you even write a character like this? He's supposed to just be super boring, lifeless, he's got nothing going for him. He's just the kind of guy that never stops talking, you know, kind of like I am doing right now. He even makes talking about the weather boring. What was the pitch meeting like? We're gonna have a brother of the grandfather. He is gonna be the most boring person you will ever meet in your life. Every time he talks to someone, he keeps them verbally hostage until someone comes to save him. He is supposed to be such a useless character. There is no reason for him to be in the show, but, but just somehow I'm so happy that he's here. Number three, this is the last side character that I will mention and you all know who it is. Sister Michael. Whenever she's on screen, I love her passive aggressive, I don't give a shit attitude. She swears, she drinks as well, takes advantage of the whole system because she likes free accommodation. She always looks like she is already done talking to you even before you start talking to her, you know, like that face. She constantly smashes happiness. She is just the most amazing side character. Number two, the parents and children dynamic. We have some main characters, which is our main squad of five. We have James, we have Michelle, we have Claire, we have Erin and we have Orla. Next to that are their parents. Every now and then the story shifts to a few of the key parents, usually to Mary and Sarah, the two mothers of Orla and Erin. Uh, what I love in this show is that it's not just about oh the teenagers they have this different world going on than the parents for example the movie it where it seems that the children have their own little adventure going on and their own struggles whereas the parents don't really give them any attention or don't really acknowledge their struggle you can kind of compare this dynamic with the dynamic between the parents and children in stranger things not all parents in stranger things are as involved in this situation but they do have their own struggles and they do try to understand their children mary and Sarah are as fucked up as Erin and Orla. Finding that balance between parents and children and writing a story that both of them can play a part in. They're not better or smarter than the children because they get into these super weird situations themselves. It's nice to see that not only the children are getting into trouble but the parents are as well. And number one, and now I'm gonna go a little bit more serious, even though this is meant to be a lighthearted and funny show, it has a very serious undertone. The show is set in the early 1990s, I believe, during the time of the Troubles. And at that time, there was a lot of violence. On the one side, there were the loyalists or the unionists or, you know, the Protestants who wanted to remain in the UK as part of the UK, as opposed to the nationalists or the Republicans the Christian side that wanted to leave the UK and join Ireland to form like one unionized Ireland. This conflict wasn't so much about religion, it was more about the constitutional status of Ireland. The most terrorism activity that ever happened in Europe was during this time and performed by groups like the IRA, the Provisional Irish Republican Army. It's estimated that there were 16,209 bomb devices identified and of those around 10,000 actually exploded between the years 1969 and 1997 and this theme of war and conflict comes back in every single episode be it in the foreground or in the background it's always there this story is about how life goes on during these very weird uh, war and conflict rhythm times. Teenagers are still very concerned about what they wear. Teenagers are still worried about what boys they like think of them. Teenagers still want to be safe but still do crazy stuff. It's very obvious that the teenagers are aware of this problem but it's not like they're taking it as hard as the adults. You have scenes where you see all of the parents huddle together in front of the TV where a reporter announces that there was an unannounced terrorist attack and at the other side where the girl 
girls are doing something in a talent show and they're dancing and they're being happy and they're living. Even sister Michael likes this image and she smirks as they dance together in this very silly way in these times. Because if you look at the bigger picture, this is not a time for celebration. This is, this is a time to be worried. I just wanted to highlight that for a second because Dairy Girls is a very funny show. It's super silly, but it has the heart and soul as well. It knows how to make it about war and conflict without shoving it in your face. It knows how to make it about how gender doesn't really make a difference without shoving it in your face. It knows how to talk about very, very difficult issues, but it's presented in a way that's both funny and heartfelt at the same time. So I decided to end on such a bummer note, but I think it's important to highlight that a show can be funny, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have, you know, heavy content. So those were my 10 reasons why I love Dairy Girls. I really did enjoy it and I'm really looking forward to the next season, if there is gonna be a next season. I don't know. I hope so. I really do encourage you all to watch it. It's not like a big time investment, like Game of Thrones that has five seasons. If you squint, maybe six. So thank you for watching. I hope you're doing great today. You're looking fine, by the way. <laughs> bye. Thank you for watching. Toodles. Bye. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs>